in this series on supernatural warfare, which we're talking about spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6 says this, is that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against principalities, authorities, cosmic powers over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. If you're not caught up on this series, uh, part one, we talked about fear-based warfare. God does not honor fear-based warfare, and we cannot engage in spiritual warfare with fear. And number two, we talked about unseating principalities. What is proper and unproper, wise and unwise spiritual warfare. And proper spiritual warfare is not you personally coming against demonic forces, but it's lifting up the highest power, which is Jesus. In part three, we talked about warring for the the father's heart and spiritual warfare is won by winning the father's heart today we are going to talk about supernatural submission and the spirit of Jezebel if you're unfamiliar with Jezebel Jezebel is the spirit of Jezebel it's a demonic power hungry spirit that uses witchcraft to control God's people in church this is a seductive, political, religious spirit that targets prophetic, spear, excuse me, spirit-led, soul-winning ministries and people. This divisive spirit attempts to destroy the lives of families, ministry, and even the closest of friends. Above all, this spirit called Jezebel will stop at nothing until you abandon the call of God on your life. It's one of the greatest ways to identify the spirit of Jezebel is do you feel like giving up and quitting? Do you feel like giving up and quitting on your ministry, on your marriage, on the perfect will of God? Few things to know. Historically, the church has used the spirit of Jezebel to control women. And I wanna bring a clarity to this, that this is not a gender specific spirit. And just for the record, there are two genders. <laughs> so what do I mean by that? Is that men and women can both operate in this spirit. In fact, I wrote a book called uh, Jezebel, The Witches Back about, I don't know, six years ago or so. And my spiritual father, John Paul Jackson, he, he forwarded the book and he wrote his book 25 years before I wrote mine. And we noticed that what we saw in the differences between the 25 years between our books is that how many more men operate in this spirit today than women. And I believe it's due to the demasculation of men in society that we're seeing this become even more and more prevalent. A couple of other things I want you to know, just because you may have a few characteristics of this spirit does not make you a Jezebel. I also want you to know that it is unlikely to be a Jezebel if you are concerned with being a Jezebel. <laughs> After the service, do not run up to me and say, Pastor, I think I'm a Jezebel. Because I assure you, it's not. It's kind of like blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. If you think you're concerned you've committed blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, I can assure you, you haven't. Because your conscience isn't seared. If you committed blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, you're like, I'm all in. I forget you, Lord. I just, you know, I, I'm all in on this wickedness, okay? And it's the same thing with Jezebel, okay? I remember when I wrote this book, a friend of mine called me. He's like, Landon, there are a lot of characteristics of Jezebel in my life. And I said, I know, me too. <laughs> And that's why I'm constantly working on these things. So that's a beautiful sign if there's a little bit of caution, okay? Uh, here I want you to know that Jezebel doesn't like to be talked about. So what does that mean? Anytime you mention Jezebel, someone on social media is gonna be like, oh, I don't even believe in that. I'm like, that's okay, she believes in you. <laughs> or you believe that, or, or, or that, that's just silly, that's just nonsense, and they'll down talk it, or distractions will happen so that you don't pay attention. It's amazing how many people message me and they're like, I, I went to go read your book and you not believe the stuff that started happening to distract in the moment. Things breaking, dishwashers breaking. My husband and I got in the biggest fight of our entire life over laundry. Like all of these like distracting things happen. So just, I'm gonna warn you, she doesn't like to be talked about. Uh, and then finally, we're not on a witch hunt. Okay, so, so we're not looking for Jezebel around every corner. Trust me, she'll find you. You don't have to worry about finding her, okay? So who was Jezebel? So Jezebel was a seductive prophetess of a false god named Baal. Jezebel was the daughter of the king priest of Sidon named Ethbaal. We find this in 1 
Kings chapter 16, verse 30. It says, but Ahab, son of Omri, did what was evil in the Lord's sight more than any other kings before him. As though it were not enough to follow the example of Jeroboam, he married Jezebel, the daughter of King Ethbel, the Sidonians, and he began to bow down and worship Baal. The word Jezebel means, this is important, without dwelling, cohabitation, unmarried, uncommitted, or unhusbanded. Jezebel will not submit. Turn to your neighbor and say, Jezebel will not submit. This is so important for later. The word unhusbanded means this, to refuse to live in peaceful cohabitation. When Ahab, uh, reigning king of Israel, married Jezebel, he directly aligned God's people with God's enemy. So, so this is a big deal because let me tell you about Jezebel's religion. The high priest of Baal, Ethbel, personally mentored his daughter in the heathen worship of the pagan god of sexuality and spiritual war. Ethbel means man of Baal or Baal is with him. So the king who, enti- who was entirely devoted to Baal indoctrinated his daughter with the notion that she was an ally of Baal and her goddess of fertility was not only the giver of life but the giver of death. He gave her an assignment to bring death and destruction to all those that oppose Baal. That's why he accordingly named her Jezebel. Jezebel worshiped Astarte, the Canaanite goddess of fertility, also Ishtar. She was regarded as the goddess of love and sensual pleasure. That's why you see seduction around Jezebel. The Assyrians also fostered her intentions that she was the goddess of war. So now we have the children of Israel that once bowed to God Yahweh, who are now bowing to a new husband named Baal. The worship of Baal rejected the holiness set up by God. It encouraged an an indulgence in every self-pleasing sexual desire as a part of self-worship. I want to say that again. Baal worship encourages the indulgence of every self-pleasing sexual desire as a part of self-worship. So through the worship of Baal, Dagon, Ashtoreth, and Molech combined for all of these erotic acts of perverted heterosexual relationships, homosexual activity, violent sexual acts, body piercing, including genitals, body cutting, and infatuation with drinking and draining of blood, prostitution, and ceremonial orgies. They were also the originators of child sacrifice. Baal worship was was self-worship. So watch this. So uh, they would have church services in the temple of Baal and they would have ceremonial orgies with uh, male or or, or heterosexual uh, uh, sex and homosexual sex. And when the females, the prostitutes from the ceremonial orgies would get pregnant due to these acts, they would take the babies and sacrifice them on an altar to a false god Baal. That was their church service. That's how wicked these people are. It was the first modern day abortion. Baal means this, possessor or husband. So Jezebel had 450 prophets of Baal, 400 prophets of Asherah, so 850 loyal servants, and she went around, look at this, enforcing the practices of Baal, chasing off every priest or prophet that was in the land, and forcing Israel to engage in this behavior until they embraced it as normal. Does that not sound like America today? So why do we call it the Jezebel spirit? Well, this woman Jezebel lived in 900 BC, which we find in 1 Kings. But then I opened up with the text of Revelation chapter two, which was written in 96 AD. So here we have, we have uh, 900 years between the, the writing of 1 Kings and Revelations 2. So Jesus is warning the New Testament church, the last day church, about tolerating this woman Jezebel that died 900 uh, years prior. So he was not talking about the threat of a person. He was talking about the threat of a spirit. Turn to your neighbor and say it's a spirit. This Jezebel spirit is a spirit of witchcraft that has plagued the church. 
And I'm gonna begin to describe how it looks. So again, we're not talking about a woman even though I say she, it's very important you understand that. We're not talking about a woman, we're talking about a spirit. The Bible uses this spirit to talk about uh, uh, or, or describes the woman Jezebel, she was a woman. And so we say she when we're describing it, but we're, we're not talking about women, we're talking about people, okay? That are under this spirit's authority, under this spirit's control, it's very important. And here's the thing, is when you begin to describe this spirit, there is this aha moment that begins to take place. I describe it like this. I was walking out of my house one summer night, I was probably 25, 26 years old, and my brother-in-law goes, hey, you smell that skunk? I said, I, I smell that smell, but I, I, didn't, I didn't know that was what a skunk smelled like. So I was a city boy, I didn't grow up in the country, okay? And so, and, and, and so I, and he said, you didn't know what a skunk smelled like? And all of a sudden, I'm having flashbacks of campouts as a kid, walking out of a church on a Sunday night, driving in the car and smelling that funny smell. And all of a sudden, I'm having all these flashbacks of my entire life and childhood where I smelled the smell, but I didn't know what the source of the smell was. When you begin to describe the spirit of Jezebel, you will have a flashback revelation of things that you've been dealing with over a long period of time that it will point to what the source of these issues were. It's like turning on a light switch, which is wonderful because now you get to realize what, you, you are, uh, what enemy is coming at you. There's an awareness of what you're dealing with. So this is not fear-based. This is an exciting because some of you are gonna be aware and you're gonna be able to fight according to what God tells us to do and fight with proper spiritual warfare, amen? So I'm gonna give you 10 characteristics of the spirit of Jezebel. I think there's 33 I mentioned in my book. Um, but but I wanna, I'm gonna warn you that just because you have one of these characteristics does not mean that you have the Jezebel spirit. But if you have four, five, six of these things, you, Meet me at the altar for prayer after. <laughs> Number one, characteristics of the spirit of Jezebel. She's an extremely, she's extremely jealous. What is she jealous of? Everything. What is she jealous of? Anything. Anything that there possibly is to be jealous of, she's jealous of. She's jealous of money. She's jealous of your spouse. She's jealous of your kids. She's jealous of your position. She's jealous of anything and everything in your life. This is a spirit that maneuvers in jealousy. The Bible teaches us to be content with where we are in all things. This is a spirit that can never have enough attention, can never have enough power, can never have enough authority, and she is jealous of anyone that's in her way to get those things. Number two, she does not love people. She uses people. She operates in a fake love. Jezebel uses people as a means to an end. And so she loves you when she can use you. And when she can't use you, all of a sudden she doesn't love you anymore because her love is contingent on her dominance in your life. Number three, information is ammunition to her. She uses information she knows about you to use against you. I'll give it like this. Uh, your past is your testimony until you cross someone with a Jezebel spirit and then your past all of a sudden becomes your present struggle. Before, it was, oh, praise the Lord, God's done so much in their life. Now it's, oh, do you know that they used to struggle? Do you know, I think they still do. And any information that you tell him, you gotta watch this with a Jezebel spirit because they'll ask a lot of questions because they are digging. A lot of times they will use it as this uh, fake prophetic edge that they have where they will pretend to prophesy but they'll just give you information that you already gave them and they'll weave it together with the spirituality but it's all it is is just information that they know about you number four she's proudly seductive there's a sensuality that this spirit uses to seduce people Men, you gotta be careful of this. Whenever there is a draw to any woman that is not your wife, and you gotta be careful with this if you're married to nobody because she's not your wife yet either. 
So anytime there is this comparison or I can meet your needs or I could love you better or you're not appreciated and your wife doesn't value you and you work so hard, if she could only see how you really are, all of those are witchcraft words to seduce you. You see this laid out in the church that people uh, can be seduced with positions. God's calling you to leave, to go somewhere else, to do something else. And as soon as you say God's called you to leave, all of a sudden there's this brand new position for you. And now you are seduced into a place of power or position or authority. And now you have to disobey God and you just got seduced by this spirit. I wanna just make a note that seduction doesn't mean you can't be fashionable. But if you are drawing people to your body, that is seduction. It's quiet in this Holy Ghost church. 8.30 is like, I thought I was coming to Mother's Day. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Number five, she stirs up strife or sowed seeds of discord. What does that look like? It looks like gossip. Talked about this last week. That you go to other people about other people rather than going to the person that you talked about. Let me help you. If you go to someone else to talk about someone who's not a part of their spiritual authority, you're in sin. Matthew 18 says you go to your brother. If you're not going to your brother, you're a gossip and you're a sinner. In fact, you're committing abominations according to scripture. That's how you create toxicity in any environment is you go to other people about other people rather than going to the source. Uh, I told you you're gonna grow supernaturally this year. You wanna grow supernaturally? You wanna personally grow supernaturally? Quit going to other people and talking bad about them. All right, Pastor, I just wanna prophesy. We'll stop talking bad first and then God will use your words to do great things later. In its simplest form, and here's what happened. You'll go to say something about somebody and all of a sudden there'll be this little, 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 little teeny, teeny, weeny, weeny, little check in your heart. And you're like, ah, oh, should I say it? And then right there, you got about a split second. Do I shut my mouth? Or do I partner with witchcraft and say something? I believe that you're gonna supernaturally grow in your ability to go, ah, oh, never mind. Hold on. Let me help you out. You gotta help your friend too. So if you loosely talk about people, you have to get together and say, hey guys, you know, we need to help each other not be advocates of witchcraft. And so if I say to you something silly like, you know, I shouldn't say, don't pull it out of me. Slap me in the face. Help me not say what I shouldn't say. Seeds of discord. So watch this. You see this all the time. So, so what is a seed of discord? A seed of discord is trying to break the cord of unity. The Bible says one puts a thousand of flight, two puts 10,000 of flight. And what? A three cord strand is not easily broken. So seeds of discord go to remove unity from relationships. So we see this. The Pharisees, when they had a problem with Jesus, who'd they go to? The disciples. When they had a problem with Jesus' disciples, who they go to? Jesus. They went to go and break unity. Why? Because the cords of unity will determine the strength of the rope. And if you break unity, you cannot hold the weight you're called to hold. Discord breaks the strength of anybody. Number six. <laughs> this is a cute one. She starts unsanctioned private ministries without permission. Now her name is unhusbanded and un unsubmitted. And so what she does is she goes and starts her own thing with no accountability, no authority, no submission. And then if she's ever confronted on it, she's like, I can't believe this. The church doesn't even want prayer. I'm just gathering people to pray and they don't even like pray, they hate prayer. Like, no, we hate Jezebel praying witchcraft over people. So we got tons of prayer small groups. Here's Pastor Matt, he leads them. Go submit it to him. But here's what they do, they don't want accountability. 
They don't want any, they, they, they will not submit. And so they do what they want and then they pre- play victim to abusive church leaders because they want to do with their own thing and they'll do it with or without accountability. It's unsubmitted. We have things in our church called house visions. They're ministries that have one foot here and one foot out. And one of the rules of a house vision is we don't, we don't house unsubmitted vision. It's a constant denominator of the power when we come together in unity. So it's, it, it, th- this is a sneaky one because she will use this to gain followers and people that feel bad for her but don't believe in her. It's quiet in this church this morning. This one might be my favorite. She operates in confusion. What do I mean confusion? Scripture says God's not the author of confusion. But Jezebel is the author of confusion. What does it look like? It means that in one moment, everything was great. You knew what you're called to do. You knew who your friends were. You knew who your church was. You knew who your pastors are. Life's never been, been better. God's been moving in your life. He's been blessing you. You've been growing. Everything's been great. You have one conversation with one Jezebel that filled you full of gossip, lies, and witchcraft, and you are confused about your call. You're confused about your church. You're confused about your friends. You're confused about your future. Whoa, 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 wind that back. After one conversation, last week, you were doing the greatest you've ever done in your life. One conversation with Jezebel, you're confused about your entire life. You have to pay attention to the spirit of confusion. When someone takes 30 minutes to explain something spiritually to you and you still don't understand, Give you an example of this. This lady one time messaged me on Facebook <coughs> from another church. And she's like, I have a prophetic dream for you. Is it okay if that I share it with you? She asked permission to share it. I'm like, oh, she must understand spiritual authority. She asked permission. She submitted it, loved it. And uh, so I didn't get back to her. I went and checked in with one of the pastors at her church about her. Before I could get back to her, she sent me this prophetic vision. I was like, I thought you're gonna ask my permission to send it to me. I guess not. And so I began to read it. And it was full of a lot of cool stuff, a lot of big words, rainbows and shooting stars and unicorns and like a lot, a lot of fun, you know, the spiritual stuff that are really big and grand and wonderful and that sound good, like, like an artist drew it, all this fun, exciting stuff and enlarge your territory. I saw you with a giant sword coming out of the mouth of a lion. I'm making all this stuff up. I don't remember what it said, but it was stuff like that. And, 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 and I'm reading it and I'm reading it. And the first thing that comes to my mind is there's nothing prophetic in this. All of this is stuff that you can make a spiritual guess by following me on social media. And then I read it again and, and, and then I'm processing it. I'm like, okay, do I, have a, do I have a problem with women in ministry? Absolutely not. Do I believe in prophecy? Of course. Do I believe God speaks in dreams? Yes. So, so, so why can't I receive this? And, and I had Heather read it. We're driving the car. I was like, baby, you gotta read this. So she starts reading. I said, just read it out loud. And as she's reading it out loud, it dawns on me. I am confused. I don't know. I've been serving the Lord my entire life. I've been at that point full-time ministry for like 18 years. And I have no idea what this lady's saying. And then I realized I would have to go back to her and get more information from her on what God is saying to me. It was confusing. See, what it was is it did not point me to God. It lured me back to her. And so it dawned on me that she was trying to draw me into her spiritual web to need her to tell me what God is saying to me. So I messaged her back. I said, hey, thank you for sending that. That wasn't God. If you want me to sit down and explain it to you, I'd be happy to. (laughs) Then I found out she had prophetic visions for all of the pastors in the church. Oh, amazing how God just gives you words for leaders. 
so that you can have influence with leaders, so you can have a place, so you can, but you weren't a member of the church. You had no commitment. There was no authority. There was, there was no accountability. You were this rogue spiritual agent that submitted to no one, but had words for everyone. Praise the Lord. Let me give you another one, two more. She won't accept apologies or forgive. You could apologize over and over and over, and then she brings the same things up over and over and over and over. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, you're mad at me for what we talked about six months ago that you said you forgave me. I thought you forgave me. I thought we addressed this. I found this when I was dealing with people with the Jezebel spirit over and over and over, and then I find myself going back into that same exhausting spiritual state of trying to prove to other people how much I love them, and I'm apologizing your feelings are hurt. I'm apologizing you're mad. I'm apologizing you didn't like the way I said that, and you're apologizing the way I smiled at you. And I just keep apologizing to try to appease you, but they will never forgive or let it go. And I asked the Lord one day, I said, why won't Jezebels ever forgive? And the Holy Spirit said, what is forgiveness? And I said, it's letting go. And he said, she won't let go of you. See, because she needs you to feel bad. She needs you to be underneath her spell. If she's mad at you, you grovel to her. If, she, if, she, if she, you know that she's upset with you, then you'll cater to her. And then all of a sudden, your emotions are dominated by the witchcraft that she maneuvers in. And, and you are completely under her control because she refuses to be godly. At Mercy Culture, one of our values is forgiveness. And you know what we say? It's not an option. You know why? Because no one wants to be a Jezebel. Because you're never more like Jesus than when you're forgiven. And if you ever hear coming out of your mouth, I can't forgive them for that, that is the Jezebel spirit. It sneaks its way into your heart. Last one. She has no fruit of the spirit. This is, a, this is an obvious indicator. She has no fruit of the spirit. That's, it's, it's interesting. I had to say fruit of the spirit. Because the church has been, become so worldly, we call things that are fruit that are not fruit. We're like, oh, I got all this money, look at this fruit. That's not fruit, that's money. Look at this new house God gave me. Look at all this fruit. That's not, it's a three-car garage. That's, that's a three-car garage, big house. It's not a fruit. You could have all that stuff and be wicked. That's not fruit. Financial blessing is not fruit. The only thing the Bible says is fruit is from Galatians. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. She has none of those. Not love, not joy, not kindness, not peace, not gentleness, not faithfulness, and Lord help us, no self-control. Look for fruit. These are 10 characteristics. I, I list over 30, oh no, that was nine, here's 10. Okay, I like this one. This is how I found Jezebel, this last one, number 10. She's never, ever, 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 ever wrong. You could catch her in a flat out on video proof and she's not wrong. One time my pastor asked me to go to this court case with the guy at the church and, and uh, he robbed a 7-Eleven and then called the police on himself and, and waited for the police to come and they arrested him and I'm going to the court thing because he went to the church one time and I'm just there, young pastor, just, just there to, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just like, I don't even know, am I allowed to pray? What am I doing? I don't know, I'm just standing here. And I'm there and the guy gets up and the judge says, how do you plead? He goes, not guilty. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> the brother called him police on himself. <laughs> And how are you not guilty? Watch, this is how Jezebel acts. That no matter what, she wasn't wrong. When she's caught, she's not wrong. When it's proven, she's not wrong. She never does anything wrong. She's never in the wrong. She's never not right. Every single opportunity to show an ounce of humility, there is none. These are characteristics of the spirit. And all of these characteristics are made up to control you. If you write something down, please write this down. Control of people is witchcraft. 
And she uses these characteristics as tactics of controlling people. She uses it to bring fear. She uses it to manipulate. She uses it to intimidate. And she uses it to completely dominate people. So you are at the point of exhaustion that you will do anything that the spirit wants you to do through individuals because you are just so tired of fighting it. Complete domination. This is how this spirit operates. And it's amazing because we've been so desensitized in the church. You want someone to fly in on a broom with a magic wand so you can understand witchcraft. And I'm trying to tell you, fear, manipulation, intimidation, and domination are the avenues of witchcraft that she controls people through. It's important that we are aware as believers. So here's what I wanna let you know is that Jezebels aren't born that way. They are made that way. The spirit of Jezebel is made within people. Her name means without dwelling or cohabitation, unmarried, uncommitted, or unhusbanded. It means this, Jezebel will not submit. We are talking about spiritual warfare. She was made to not submit. This is so important. This demonic spirit was designed to not submit. I wanna teach you about submission today because in the church, submission has become a dirty word. And why has it become a dirty word? Because spiritual leaders has used the word submission to control, manipulate, intimidate, and dominate people. And it's really been a Jezebel spirit forcing submission rather than true submission from God. I've grown up in the house of God my entire life. I've seen this foul spirit at work. I've seen it destroy churches, destroy ministries, and destroy families because they try to force a submission. It sounds like this. This is how this this witchcraft manipulation sounds. If you leave this church, you'll be cursed. Really? Wow. Because you just said from the stage last week, that you could come to this altar. It didn't matter if you were on drugs. It didn't matter if you were addicted. It didn't matter if you were in prostitution. It didn't matter what kind of sin was in your life, that you just had to come to this altar, give your life to Jesus, and he would save you. He would sanctify you. He would justify you. He had a plan and purpose for your life. And over 2,000 years ago, while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. Watch, but if you leave this, This church, man, I I missed that scripture. I know there's 31,000. I've read it a few times, but that is witchcraft. Watch. True submission is not someone else controlling you. True submission is you controlling you. Let me show you this in the word of God, I love this. The word submit comes from two Greek words, hopo and histemi. We get the word hypoteso is the word submit in the Greek. It means this, to place or rank under, to subject, to obey. To place under or I submit myself into subjection. Watch this. It, by biblical definition, is not submission if it's forced. It's only submission if you place yourself under. And we have lost the art, the understanding. We've lost the concept the brilliance, the power in true godly submission. Here's the thing. People think they're submitted, but they're not. And we don't even know if you're submitted 
until your will is tested. People, oh, this is the best church ever. The worship, the amazing, Pastor Jasmine, the everything. It's awesome, it's awesome, it's wonderful. Can I bring my tambourine in service and play it right in front of the microphone? No, you can't do that. That church, they just control the spirit. This one lady said to me, she goes, can I blow my shofar in service? I said, no. She goes, you guys are just trying to quench the anointing. I thought this was a house of freedom. It is a house of freedom. In of order, shout out. She goes, you're quenching the spirit. I said, how about I go into your house that I don't pay the bills of, rearrange your furniture, and set up pictures of my family in your house? Oh, you wouldn't want that? I said, are you a member? No. So you want to come into someone else's house and blow your shofar. Now, don't get, get it twisted. I blow my shofar all over the world. I blow my shofar in here all the time. I do it in order. And if we're going to blow shofars, we're going to teach so people understand so they're not thinking like we're just weirdos coming in with just We're not doing that. <laughs> well, every church I go to, they don't want me there. I wonder why. Because they see you coming. <laughs> Here's the thing, let me, let me help you. Because there's people that think they're submitted, but they're really not. So I'm gonna tell you how you know if you're submitted or not. Is there someone in your life that can tell you no? If there is no one in your life that can tell you no, you're spiritually rogue. Happy Mother's Day. No, 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 we have a prophetic word that we're gonna supernaturally, personally, spiritually grow. How do you think it happens? There is a breakthrough of strongholds that are in your life. Church, I came to tell you this morning that forced submission is what makes the Jezebel spirit. Watch this, I love God's word. I've never seen this in my entire life till this week when I started studying this. Ephesians 6, 12, we have read this every week for the last four weeks. Put it up on the screen, please. It says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness. Look at this, against the spiritual forces of evil. Oh man. What is the spiritual force of evil? It's spirits of warfare in the world that encourage rebellion against God in the heart of man. There is a force, a wicked force, that is forcing you into submission to it and trying to lead you away to true submission from God. The Jezebel spirit is made by forcing you to submit to her and leading you away to the submission of God. I love this because people are gonna get free. Jezebels are made in the world through forced evil and Jezebels are made in the church through forced religion. Women have been accused of being the Jezebel. But the truth is, is they have been created to be it through forced religion, through forced submission. If you've heard you have to submit to a man who's not submitted, he's disqualified to bring that to you. How many husbands demand submission from their wives and use scripture to try to manipulate but have no submission to spiritual authority of their own? I remember in our earlier days of marriage, I was the worst husband ever, just ever. I was the worst. I'll put my bad husband against your bad husband any day. And one time I said, I said to Heather, I said, you have to submit. She goes, give me something to submit to. I'm like, You're just like your mother. I don't know what I said. I don't know. That's what you say when you, are. That's what you, say when you fight, right? You shouldn't say that. We'll tell, teach that in marriage class. Watch. Jezebel is created 
by forced submission. That's how that spirit operates. Isn't it interesting that everything in the world is forcing evil? You have no choice. You do what they say or you're canceled. Ah, I want to say forced abortions are coming after forced vaccinations, but I'm processing if I should say that out loud or not. Watch. There is a spirit at work forcing evil. A politician's daughter tweeted this week, if Jesus was alive today, he would work at Planned Parenthood. First of all, Jesus is alive. <laughs> and the fact that you don't know that disqualifies the rest of your statement. <laughs> Watch, the enemy tries to force submission and it starts by getting you to self-worship. Genesis chapter three, Adam and Eve were in the garden and the serpent, the devil came and said, you'll be like God. See, when you live to please you, you're already on the journey of that forced evil. It goes from you serving you to you serving Satan. I know that's a, a, a hard statement to hear because a lot of people think of Satan worship. But the problem is, is that Satan worship is identical to Baal worship. And it's the antichrist spirit that we're seeing engage in the earth today. And it turns into a force. Look at this, Matthew chapter four. This is uh, Satan tempting Jesus in the wilderness. And verse nine, go to verse nine. Verse nine says this, Matthew four, nine. It's in your notes, you texted. And he said to him, this is Satan, all this I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Now watch this. And Jesus said, be gone, Satan, for it is written that you shall worship the Lord and serve him only. Watch this. Jesus was our example of submission. That in submission, you're given a choice. Do I choose to submit to God or do I choose to be forced into submission from an evil spirit? James 4, 7, look at this. This is awesome. It's gonna bring freedom to you. We hear this all the time, resist the devil and he will flee from you. We have to read the whole verse. It says this, therefore submit yourselves to God. That is the prerequisite. Watch, resist the devil and he will flee. That word resist in the Greek is the word anathistimi. It's a military term and it means this, to strongly resist an opponent to completely stand against, holding one's ground, refusing to be moved, watch this, to forcefully declare one's convictions and withstanding without giving up or without giving, letting go. Watch this, this is so awesome. Submission is supernatural warfare against the forces of evil. So that word resist means to forcefully stand against. Watch this. Ephesians 6 says there's evil heavenly forces that are coming against the people of God. And James 4, 7, watch, says, through submission, the force of God wars against the forces of evil. We saw this in Jude 1 where the archangel Michael said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, or watch, what is submission? I am placing myself underneath the authority of God. Remember that Jezebel's spirit wants you to be controlled. She wants you to be unsubject to her. And so how 
do we engage in this spiritual warfare, this supernatural warfare? Submission releases the power of God to wage war against the forces of evil in our lives. Isn't this mind-boggling that we have thought that you have to pray louder, shout louder, do more, more effort, more strategy, take the city, and what God's word says is we need to learn how to submit to God. What does it mean to submit to God? It means this, that we willingly choose to obey him. Worship team, come and join me. We willingly choose to obey him. That's how you submit to God. I'm gonna say this one more time. We willingly choose to obey him. Revelations 2, 21 says, I have given her time to repent for her immorality. Look at this, she is unwilling. What is giving her time, it's giving her time to choose. Do you know anywhere in your spiritual journey, there's this place of grace, this moment in time for you to turn away from any wickedness and to choose to turn to obey God? Isn't it interesting how hard it is to obey God and how easy it is to be forced into evil through wicked spirits? Let me say it like this, it is so easy to sin. And why does it feel challenging to live godly lives? Because we're not fully submitted to him. And when we fully submit, it engages supernatural warfare to begin to war on our behalf, watch, forcefully against the forces of evil. Hmm. The battle in pornography is won by submission. The battle in lust, the battle in greed, what the battle in pride, whatever has come against you is not won in your efforts. It's won by submitting to God. So I came to ask you a question today. Are you submitted to God? Are you submitted to Him? Is He Lord of your life? Are you submitted to Him? Or are you being forced into submission of evil? Are you being forced into a worldly life? I'll say it really simple. Do you live for you? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me this morning? Scripture says, I've given her time to repent, but she's unwilling. You know what that word unwilling means in the Greek? It means the best offer. You have a choice today. You could take Jezebel's best offer of wickedness and worldliness, control, manipulation, intimidation, all of her witchcraft, or you could take the best offer of salvation that comes through the Lord. Scripture says, if we confess with our mouth and believe with in our heart, if we submit ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus, that's what it's saying, we will be saved. With every head bowed, every eye closed, here's my question, I'm very specific with it. If you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, if you are not submitted to Him, If you don't know if you are saved, it's only through Jesus. It's only through submitting to Jesus. I'm not saying you're struggling. I'm saying you haven't done this before. And no one's looking around. I'm not gonna ask you to come up here. This is between you and the Lord right now. 
but everyone in this entire place, including the balcony. But if you would say, I wanna make Jesus Lord of my life. I wanna submit to him. If that's you, just raise your hand in the sanctuary right now. If that's you, just raise your hand in the sanctuary right now. I see your hand, I see your hand, I see your hand, I see your hand, I see your hand. Awesome, I see your hand. Anyone else? Just give you a moment. The Lord sees your hand. More importantly, the Lord sees your heart. Now, can we just pray together all over this place, boldly together? Would you just say, Lord Jesus, I submit to you. My heart, my body, my life, every part of me. Say, have mercy on me. Forgive me of sin. Say, Jesus, cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Say, I submit to your Lordship. Come on, let's pray boldly together. Say, Holy Spirit, I invite you to have your way. Say, Holy Spirit, would you fill me? I don't fully understand all of it, but I know I love you. I want you. I need you. Come on, pray this powerful prayer. Say, speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Okay, with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, we're almost done. If there are some areas in your life that you say, Landon, I am struggling in submitting those to Lord. There are some rogue areas, maybe even in some of the Jezebel characteristics, there's some things that you struggle with. And one mistake we do when we minister on Jezebel is we always think about other people versus looking at our lives. And if there's anything that is in your life that is not glorifying God because it's not submitted to God, right now, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to not be forced into submission, but to choose to submit to humble yourself and to obey God. Maybe it's jealousy, maybe it's pride, maybe it's an immorality, maybe it's a greed. I don't know what it is and I don't care what it is. The only thing that matters is that you get right with God, that you have a moment to submit everything in your life. Maybe it's a love for the world. Maybe you've been indoctrinated by the strategies of the world. But all over this place, no one's looking around. This is between you and God. But if you say, Landon, there's an area in my life I want to fully submit to God. I'm not going to invite you down here. This is between you and God. Just lift your hand right where you're at and say, I want to submit it to God. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. That's a beautiful heart. So right now, where you're at, just tell the Lord what you just told me. And just say this. Say, so Holy Spirit, help me. I submit this to you right now. Whatever it is, just whisper him. Just whisper to him. Just whisper to him. Whatever it is, I submit this to you. I submit this area to you. I declare you're Lord of this area. You're Lord over this fear. You're Lord over this temptation. You're Lord over this desire. I, I know I, I said I'm sorry. I know that I failed over and over. But today I choose to obey you. Come on, ask the Holy Spirit right now. This is where he partners with you. Come on, this is where he helps you. He's the helper. He's the comforter. Right now, this is where it happens. Holy Spirit, I pray right now for an empowerment to come. Come and rest on your people right now. Last thing I felt in my spirit, if you're a woman and that title of Jezebel has been used against you to hurt you and to force you into submission. I want to break it off of you. So if that's you, you can do whatever you want to do, darling. You can stand, you can kneel, you can bow, you can come to the front, you can do whatever you want to do. I, it doesn't matter your response. What matters is, is the lies of the enemy are broken. So I just take a moment. And as the spiritual father of this house, Lord, with whatever spiritual authority you've given me, I leverage it for this moment. And I declare every 
word curse of manipulation to try to force your daughters into submission. Father, I break it off them now. I declare they are not that. I declare that they are pure daughters. They are pure women. And I declare every lie from the pit of hell, every every attack from the enemy to try to manipulate and to try to control. I declare that they are free. I pray that you would take every fiery arrow out of their hearts, every word curse out of their hearts, and I replace them with life. I replace them with love. Father, I thank you that they are humble women of God that are submitted to you. They're submitted to their husbands. They're submitted to your lordship. They're submitted to the perfect will of God. And I declare that they are not cursed, that they are blessed. I declare that they are walking in the favor of God. I declare their Proverbs 31 women, that you're blessing everything that they touch. I declare that their pastor calls them blessed. Their husbands will call them blessed. Their friends will call them blessed. I declare that they will not just survive, but they will be women that thrive. Lord, I declare everything that has been spoken over them that is contrary to your word. We declare it is removed in Jesus' name. And I declare that you women are blessed and highly favored. I declare the presence of God is with you and on you and for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Someone put your hands together and give the Lord a hand praise in this place. Pastor Chris, come and join me. I just want to pray one more time. Father, I pray uh, that my words or personality would not be heard, but I pray that your heart and your mind would be received. Father, I thank you for this Mother's Day. And Lord, today is your day. We honor you. I just declare right now a hedge of protection around this congregation. I declare that we will not engage in fear-based warfare. I declare that we will unseat principalities in our family. I declare that we have a war for the Father's heart. And I declare that we are people that are submitted unto God. And I declare supernatural growth and supernatural warfare. I declare right now that you are equipping us to expand territory, that you're equipping us to take ground. And Father, I declare your blessing over your people in Jesus' mighty name.